for, for so long, potentially to try to influence the result. Do you agree? Do you have any worries that Netanyahu may be trying to influence the election and that's why he has not agreed to a diplomatic solution? No administration has helped Israel more than I have. None. 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 And I think uh, Bibi should remember that. And uh, whether he's trying to influence the election or not, I don't know, but I'm not counting on that. You've said many times recently that you want to speak to him, that you plan no, to. No, I didn't say plan to. I didn't say want to. You don't want to? No, I didn't say that. You're making it sound like I'm seeking and then uh, speaking. I'm assuming when they make the judgment of how they're going to respond, we will then have a discussion. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, for being here. What are you advising the Israelis to do in terms of their retaliation to Iran? And at this point, you still haven't spoken to Netanyahu. Is it fair to say that you have little personal influence over what he decides to do? No. Look, our, our teams are in contact 12 hours a day. They're constantly in contact. I've already had my presidential daily brief. We've already had an inter interface between our military, our to diplomats, it's in constant contact. They are trying to figure out, and this is high holidays as well, they're not going to make a decision immediately, and uh, so we're going to wait to see what they, when they want to talk. But over the past few months, they've consistently defied your administration's own advice. So do you believe that the Israelis are going to listen to the advice you're giving them? What I know is the plan that I put together received the support of the U.N. Security Council and the vast majority of our allies around the world as a way to bring this to an end. One of the, look, the Israelis have every right to respond to uh, the vicious attacks on them, not just from the Iranians, but from the, everyone from Hezbollah to Houthis to, anyway. And, uh, but the fact is that, um, they have to be very much more careful about dealing with civilian casualties. So how should they respond? You express concerns about attacks on Iranian oil facilities. How should they respond? That's between me and them. All right, we got to move on. Go ahead, Tam. The election is a month away. One, I'd like to know how you're feeling about how this election is going. And then also, do you have confidence that it will be a free and fair election and that it will be peaceful? Two separate questions. Very much. I'm confident it'll be free and fair. I don't know whether it will be peaceful. The things that Trump has said and the things that he said last time out when he didn't like the outcome of the election were very dangerous. Uh, if you notice, uh, I, I noticed that the vice presidential Republican candidate did not say he'd accept the outcome of the election. They haven't even accepted the outcome of the last election. So uh, I have I, I, I'm concerned about what, the, what they're going to do. Are you making any preparations, getting security briefings related to <coughs> domestic security? I always get those briefings. All right, we got to move on. Go ahead, Kayla, and we have to do a couple more. Hi. <coughs> Hi, Mr. President. What are you considering imposing sanctions on Iran, and would you include oil in those sanctions? That's, a, that's, that's under consideration right now, the whole thing. I'm not going to discuss that now. And just on your comments yesterday on the port strike, you said, by the grace of God, it's going to hold. Is there any reason you think that this temporary Well, there's temporary more to do. In a month from now, there's more to do in terms of everything from the whole notion of me me excuse me, mechanization of the ports and the like. There's more to, re more to resolve. Good, Daniel. Uh, thanks, Green. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, last night, you said that there's still a lot to do to avoid an all-out war in the Middle East. I mean, firstly, aren't we pretty close to that definition already? And, and secondly, what, what can you really do to stop that happening? There's a lot we are doing. The main thing we can do is try to rally the rest of the world, and our allies, into participating like the French are in, in Lebanon and other places to t tamp this down. And, uh, but uh, when you have proxies as irrational as Hezbollah and the Houthis, and uh, it's, uh, it's a hard thing to determine. Got to I gotta go. Okay. I know, I know. Thank you. <laughs> so I said I'd take a couple of questions. <laughs> All right, you're the last. I, 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 I think, I think she's increasing her credibility. <laughs> I have to take some more. Yeah. 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 Yeah
before. <laughs> Toulouse, you're going to be the last one. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for, for spending some time here with us. There have obviously been a number of crises that the country has been facing over the past several days with the hurricane, with the port strike, with the situation in the Middle East. Can you talk about how your vice president, who is running for the presidency, has worked on these uh, crises and what role she has played over the past several days? Well, she's, I'm in constant contact with her. She's aware we're, we're, all, we're singing from the same song sheet. We, uh, she helped pass the, all the laws that are being employed now. She was a major player in everything we've done, including passage of the legislation which we were told we could never pass. And so she's been, uh, and her, her staff is interlocked with mine in terms of all the things we're doing. Mr. President, did you ever think about the history of the 